okay <clears throat> so last time when we saw one example right yeah okay what is that example basically okay, let we will recall it so basically by using the spring uh, in spring there is so many modules is there <clears throat> so we started the first module ioc inversion of control yeah. so what is the purpose yes. of the may um, this model by using this we can able to create the object correct yes so that is the main purpose of this model so we can able to create the object in different ways so the first one what we saw last time by using the setter and getter yes okay here what we are doing we are using property property name comma value inside the xml yep. so we are declaring a property restart yes we are declaring a property and uh, <coughs> we are giving of the property name and corresponding value inside the xml yeah right. so this is the property this is the name and this is the value yeah so this process we used to call it by using the setter getter why setter getter right if you see your pose class so here you will see all the field names and their corresponding set field name and get field name right correct so this one we yeah. use, we used to call it as a setter injection so this is the first one what we saw last time yeah so basically in ioc so there is a different way to assign the value for object fields the first way is setter injection so this one we used to call it as a setter and getter injection yeah so here we are defining a property name and corresponding value inside your xml right so this is clear right this example setter and getter yeah. property name and value inside your xml yeah okay so as part of the second example right so we will see the second example so how we are going to assign the value in a different approach by using the constructor okay so as a pre as part of previous example we used setter getter and we are injecting the value property name and value so as part of the second example we are going to create a constructor and we are defining all the fields as part of the constructor arguments and we will assign the value right so yeah. this one we used to call it a constructor injection right so these two are the different types of ioc right okay let me open that example this is also almost a similar uh, like a previous one okay this is not this is also the like a previous we will see one more example like a previous one so first one we will see here a person so this is yeah you can see the person person here name age lovers mail email and address is there so if you see right. address right so this address is a different class correct so inside the person class we are referring another class correct uh address is class here actually yes person is a class correct this is a person yeah so yeah. inside person there is so many first name last name fields is there so yeah. there is one field called address so this address we are referring a different object ah, okay okay we are referring the different object okay different object so how we, now we need to create basically how many object two objects here indirectly correct sure. first we need to yep. create a address object that address object we need to inject into person object person right correct so yeah so this is a person object and inside the person object you have a address object address is a different yeah. class yeah so how to create two different objects and how to refer that one so far as part of the last example we are created only single object only person object right now we are creating two different objects and we are referring one from another right correct we are we have yeah. to create person object from the person object we have to get the address object right 
So how to refer one object from another object? So that is the example of this one. Right. Okay. Now first we will see the person XML. See inside the person we have a name value property name value and lower is a list so we have to give we have given able to give more values all right let me close so we have a name age correct so if you see their address yeah. address is a different class correct right so address is a field name and to get the corresponding value see here we are not assigning the value directly so what we are doing here reference and we are giving yes. some other name some other bean name so where is this uh, value is declared address value if you come down right so bean id equal to address class equal to com dot uh, test dot address and property name and value yeah correct so basically we yeah. are creating a different bean different bean with address okay this one we are referring reference address so whenever okay. you need address value so you need to refer other bean right from your person bean so that way we can able to get the value from other other bean so you got it right so okay. we are not assigning the address value directly here just we are referring the other bean yeah so this this is the way to refer one bin from other bin so whenever you need <coughs> address value address bin from inside the person bin so you have to refer it so you have to use the ref keyword so you have to use the ref keyword and you have to give the corresponding bin value why because right. this is not a straight forward it's not a string it is not an integer it's a data type is address it's a different data type so different object right, right. so you, this is clear right yeah and rest of the things so, are same yeah tell me so that means then uh, if i want to refer suppose uh, address is a different class different object so i create a bin here yes and then different bins reference so if i want to declare so many uh, refer so many you can uh, you can you can just creating a bin and then referring is that right Yes, you have to refer it and you have to create another bin, different bin and with name as address. Name and address, got it. Yep. So like this, it's a different bin, right? So this is a different yeah. bin and the above one is a different bin. Yeah. Basically two bins here. One bin is person bin, another bin is address bin. Right. Okay. <clears throat> and rest of the things are same. Now go to the person manager class yeah see here <clears throat> so person manager right so now what we have to do bean factory bf equal to new xml bean factory and class path results and we have to give your full class xml name okay to get to get the bean okay no yeah. What I am trying to do first, I want to get the person object. So to get the person yeah. object, bf dot get bean, and we have to give the bean ID. So what is the bean ID you declared here? Bean ID person. Person. So we have to use this name to get the person object. So you will get person okay. object. So how many objects you want? So you can you have to use the same name, get bean, and you have to pass the person name so you will get the person object okay correct so inside the person object you can able to see address also correct yeah okay now first i'm directly i'm getting the person object so inside the person object i have address object also let me print the values and we will see so let me run it see here first what i'm trying to do i'm calling the person object right so person constructor right. is executing after that if you see here it address i'm trying to get so address object is executing 
Get it? All right. Yeah. After that, you will see there is two methods. For time being, you can ignore it. I will tell you later. Okay. After uh, that, okay. I, I, after that, I am printing the address object two times. See, sorry, person object P and P two. Correct. Person. Right. So you can able to see the all values. Why? Because inside the person class, I have overridden the two string method. So that's what you will see all the values. All right. And you will see address also. See address equal to. So this is where yeah. we can able to get the person object. All right. The similar way, if you want to get only address object, you can give the B name, and you can get you can able to get the address object also. Okay. And so far, this is clear, right? How to get the B name? Yeah. Yeah. So we have to pass the B name, and you need to downcast to exactly which B you are trying to get, and you can able to get the values. Yeah. Okay. Now the last one, I think last as part of last class, I don't know whether we discussed it or not. These methods, init type and method, destroy type and methods. Okay. Yeah. No, I didn't discuss. Yeah. So, what is the purpose <coughs> of this one, right? So, when we are creating an object, means when when we are trying to create a person object or address object, right? Before creating the object, before creating the object, or once the object is creation is done. Before creating okay. the object, or once the object creation is done, if you want to perform some operations inside a method, so you can declare these methods. So this is the keyword init type and method, and you can give the method name. So init is a method name, and it is available under address class. What is this? Yes, so here. So in it is a method. So what is the purpose of this method, right? So I want to execute this method before creating the object. So what, before creating the object means when we are creating the object, first time constructor will execute, right? Yeah. So after that, if you want to perform some other some operation, first constructor it will execute. After that, if you want to execute some other operations, so you can able to write in this method. You write here whatever you want. Then this method name you can give any name. Just pass here init hyphen method. You can give the method name. So it will be executed once the constructor execution is done. Then this method will be executed. So if you want to see this one, let me run it and I will show you. So when the init method will be executed. Sorry. This is a life cycle, basically. See here, first constructor is executed, person class and address class. After that, you will see init method is executed. Right. So once the constructor execution is done, if you want to execute any method explicitly, then you have to mention that method name here. Init type and method equal to that method name. Okay. So so actually. Uh, uh, init method actually running after constructor. So mainly, uh, what is the purpose of this init method? If I don't use it, so it will affect on the bin. It will not. That is up to you. This is optional. Okay. If you want any kind of requirement like that, you can use it. If you see the person class, right? So here there is no init method. Right. These these are the optional methods. If you want, you can declare. Okay. Otherwise, you can ignore. This is a facility is available. Okay. okay. And the second one is right. So first, right as part of the life cycle, how it will in, I mean uh, execute it. So first constructor. After that, init iPhone method. After that, it will assign all the values for the setter. Correct. Okay. So first constructor will execute. After that, init method will execute. After that, it will set the values. We have a setter getters, right? Yeah. So it will set all the values. After that, now object creation is done. Object values assigning also done, right? Yeah. So if you want to execute end of the object creation, if you want to execute something, so then we have a another lifecycle method called destroy. Iphone method. And okay. you can give the method name. Okay. 
so destroy is a different method so when this method will execute at the end of object creation so okay. it will be done object creation yes object creation is done constructor executed and uh, all the values are also assigned after that it will execute if you want to perform some operations you can write under destroy method so okay. these are the life cycle of object creation constructor init method all the setter getter and getter and the destroy method okay you got it right life cycle yeah. and let yeah. me run it and i'll show you how that uh, life cycle destroy method got created so if you see here first object person object address object constructor these two are the constructor then init method right, right. then it, yeah. after that right it will do all the setter getter values yeah after that <clears throat> so what is the destroy method here it is the destroy so here you will see the destroy correct so when this yeah. is executed so right now you are not able to see here so <clears throat> whenever this object is removing from the heap okay the object is removing from the heap right? so that time this method will be executed the destroy method so whenever this object will be removed from the heap right so that time this destroy method will be executed so when that will be removed that we don't know why because that will be taken care by garbage collector jvm okay <clears throat> that's what you were not able to see this method destroy method so destroy actually used for uh, to close the object yes or... correct whenever you, the object is removing from the heap then that time this method will be executed okay So as part of core Java, right? So you are not able to see this one why? Because we don't know when this object will be uh, removed from the heap, correct? So when you are <coughs> handling uh, servlets and all, right? So whenever your server is making down, so that time all the object will be killed, correct? Yeah. So that time you can able to see this method, destroy method. I will show you that one as part of some other examples. Why? Because here we are not using any server, right? Yeah. So that's what you were not able to see this method. Why? Because we don't know when the JMA will remove this object. So that time this method will be executed. But this is the life cycle. Constructor, okay. init method, all the setter and getter will be executed. Finally, it will execute destroy method. Okay. And you can give any name. Not only destroy, you can give X Y Z also. So that X Y Z you have to mention here. Oh, okay, got it. So in the destroy method, I can mention or rename anything else. Anything like a cleaning activities, closing okay, the collections, such kind of things. Yeah, got it. So this example is clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Now the second example, third one is. Yes, this is. The <clears throat> constructor injection so far right how we assign the values by using the setter and getter correct yeah okay <clears throat> the second approach like i told you right by using the constructor how we are going to assign the values instead of writing the setter and getter i want to inject the values by using the constructor okay so this is the second example so so if you see here so there is a class i have created mail So inside the mail class, I have a ID, mail ID, password, three fields. Right. ID, mail ID, and password. So for I want to yeah. assign values for these fields. So how can I assign? Yeah. One is setter and getter, and second one is by using the constructor. Yeah. Okay. So inside the main class, if you see what there is one default constructor is there. So class name is. Same as yeah. name. So this one I used to call it as a constructor, correct? Right. And below you can see that there is another constructor, same class name. And if you see the arguments, yeah, there is all the arguments. All the arguments is there. 
Yeah. In this case, right? So this setter and getter is optional. If you want, you can declare. Otherwise, you can ignore. There is no okay. harm. But we are not using these fields. Basically, we are trying to assign the values by using the constructor while we create right. the object. So this is the second approach. Yeah. So how to assign the values by using the constructor? So that we will see in XML. So open your XML. So we have to give the beans under bean. We are declaring a bean. We are giving some name for ID and we are giving the class full class path. Right. So if you see here, you will not see here property name value. You will see here constructor hyphen arguments. Correct. So this is a constructor, right? right? Yeah. So this one we used to call as arguments, correct? ID, right. ID, password, these are the arguments, correct? Right. So here the main and bullet point is what is the index of this one? Zero. What is the index of second field? One. What is the index one. of third field? Two. Zero, one, two, three. So that is the main constructor iPhone argument index zero equal zero means the first field. What is the first field? Yes. Uh, uh, ID. ID. So what is the value you want to give for that one? So value actually 10. Can I define anything else or? So we have to give the index 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. And you have to give the corresponding value. So the 10 will be assigned to what is the zero index here? ID, correct? Yeah. And what is the second index? Mail ID, correct? Mail ID. So index is 1. For mail ID, what is the value you want to give? CTFS 1, 2, 3. So this is so the how can I assign the value? The, uh, the assignment. So here we are not mentioning the property name. We are mentioning right. the order of the index. Right. So that is the basic difference between the setter injection and constructor injection. Yeah. No, I'm asking the value. Where, where I'm getting the value from? So this is the value time. you are giving 10. So how we are retrieving the value you are asking? No, no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, there is index is zero, one, two, three. Okay. But we are giving the value equal to 10, value equal to CTFS, one, two, three. Yes. So that is, how can I define the values? Because values. Uh, you mention, uh, so if you consider, right, let me copy this constructor. I will tell you. Open. Okay. Open this XML and open. Yes. So this is your constructor, correct? Right. So this is the first index, zero index. Right. Yeah. And one index and two index, correct? There is totally right. three arguments is there. So and the index is zero, right. one, two, three. Zero, one, two. Right. Zero, one, two. For zero, if you mention the index is zero, the value will be assigned to integer ID. Yeah. Assigned to ID field, basically. Yeah. And if you mention the index equal to one, the value will be assigned to mail ID. Okay. And if you mention the index equal to two, the value will be assigned to password. password. Okay. And the type is optional. If you want to mention, you can type mention what is the zero index type? Data type. Zero index data type is integer. So I'm mentioning here Java dot in the integer and what is the first index data type string so i'm mentioning here these are the type is optional okay now you got it right so how to assign the value yeah so this index is the very very important if you change the index here instead of zero if you keep the two right so 10 will be assigned to the uh two will be in the password Correct. So the index is the very important. So the index will be given as per the this order. Yeah. Now it's clear, right? Yeah. Now let me run it and we will see whether these values are assigned or not. So basically I'm trying to <coughs> load the mail dot XML and I'm trying to get the mail object. Correct? Yeah. So mail yeah. bin ID I'm referring and I'm trying to get the values. So let me run it. 
and we will see so you can see here <coughs> so inside the yes. constructor just i added one CSO to if you see here what is the first statement you will see see here this is the system what it is executing mail integer id blah 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 correct yeah after that i am printing the entire mail object so i can able to see the values 10 ctfs123 right. ctfs122 two, 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 two something yeah so why because so in this class i have overridden the two string method so i can able to see all the values yes this is the second approach to assign the value by using the constructor injection right the first one is setter injection and the second one is constructor injection these two are the uh, two types but we have some other types also we will see that one also okay okay so this example is clear right yeah Now let me open some other one. So this is also another example for another example for constructor injection. Okay, okay. See here it's address is a class. Okay, address is a class. So here we have a street name city and mail mail is a different class basically right it's not a straight straight forward object field it's a different class correct so mail right. is declared is a separate class so where is that mail class this is a class correct yeah. so basically we inside the address class we are referring another object mail yeah so like in previous case we are referring address object inside the person class correct right so in, in the similar way here inside the <coughs> address class we are referring mail object and we are trying mm -hmm. to assign the value by using the constructor right correct and this is the index yeah. this is the street name is the zero index and city is the first index True. and mail is yeah, the first second index. second correct so how we right. are going to define this values just open it so mail is the first object and this is the class so 0 1 2 3 correct yeah okay basically inside the address class we are referring the mail correct yeah so let me go to the first address class so this is the id equal to address and this is the class full path so this is the index i had given 0 1 2 3 so first one is a straightforward address name street name so yeah. you can able to assign the value directly for zero index for first index city you can able to assign the straight value directly the third index is the mail so we are referring some different object right so we are giving here ref yeah. we are referring the different object and we are trying to get that particular value correct right and mail is a different class and here inside this constructor we have a straightforward id mail id password this is these are the string and integers so we can able to get assign the value directly it's a straightforward object right see the mail here we have a 0 1 2 3 and we can able to assign the value directly here but whereas in case of address we are referring mail object so if you want to refer one bean from another bean we have to use the keyword called reference reference so this is clear yeah so this is the second type of constructor injection yes so this example is clear right constructor injection. yeah okay okay so so far right we are creating an object for only simple classes correct right okay. i mean just we are creating a person class address class and we are uh, injecting the object okay now so this module is to called as an inversion of control 
correct right yeah okay. and after that we are going to discuss a second module called mvc so what is the purpose of that one first before going to the second module mvc just to we'll discuss uh, briefly <clears throat> so we we saw right javascript html servlets and jsp correct right so inside the <clears throat> what is the main purpose of javascript we are developing uh, uh, fields and we are doing the validations correct like first time last right. time some buttons and validation so that is the main uh, purpose of html to display some right. to the user after that what we are doing we are providing the some validation by using the javascript right then we use servlet also right servlet yes so what is the purpose of servlet so to serve the request we are reading the property fields correct we are reading the property fields right and we are processing it correct request dot get yes. the first name last name username password correct yeah so first one is html so html is the purpose is to display view correct yeah html and javascript so i think we have already saw this one html and javascript we are using to display something to the user correct yes yeah and the second thing is we are using servlets so what is the purpose of this one to process the request right this is the second thing we I mean we have already saw and the third one is we saw jsp also correct yeah so inside the jsp <clears throat> can i write html code yes i can write right so inside the jsp i can write html means i can write javascript also correct yeah and can i write the java code java code we are using scriptlet and we used to write right java code yeah so i can write yeah. java code also yeah <clears throat> so basically here inside the uh, javascript i can do everything i can do i can able to add html code javascript code java code right i can able to yes if i can able to write java code i can able to connect to database also right right so basically i can able to add everything in jsp right okay let's suppose i inside the jsp page i displayed some login page username password and submit it and after that i have written some java code and i am trying to connect to the database and i am validating this user name and password is valid or invalid after that i am trying to display some message right so everything i am trying to do only in jsp only correct i can able to do it right yes but that is not the right way to do that will work 100% no issue but that is not the right way to do the coding we are not organizing the things properly so for display okay. purpose we are writing html and to connect to the database we are writing java code <clears throat> to provide the validation we are writing javascript everything in one page Correct? right so but yes. that is not the right way to do the things so we are following some of the patterns so that is called model view controller so what is the purpose of this model view controller right so what it will do so it will separate the things in different different layer okay so basically here we have a three layers so what is the first layer is model second layer is view yes and third layer is controller right model view controller right yeah so what is the purpose of this model view controller so by using this uh, mvc pattern or mvc model so we can able to avoid the this kind of designs like every writing everything in one page okay so basically we are splitting these tasks into different layer right or what is the view purpose what is the database connection everything we are splitting 
So yeah. how we are going to split, right? So this is three layers. The first one is first one. We will see the view. So what is the view? So view means so what you are going to display to the user, like username, password, text fields, buttons, correct? Yeah. So this one we used to call it as a view. So all user related information will be displayed under view. Yes. So you can, you have to, <clears throat> so we are segregating the things into different layers. So if you want to write anything to the user related information, you have to go to this model and you have to write it. Just today we will right. discuss only theoretically and, and tomorrow yeah. we will see how to write files and all. Okay. Okay. So view means if you want to display to something the user or if you want to do some modification for user UI, so you have to go to this module and you have to modify it. Right. Okay. Now yeah. the second thing is controller. So what is the purpose of controller, right? So if, what is the purpose of servlet? What it will do? It will take the request and it will process it, right? Yes. So servlet will read all the values from the user information and it will connect to the database and it will give the response back. Correct? Right. So that logic you can write under controller. Process yeah. the request. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Now the second one is <clears throat> the third one is right. So first what you will do Okay, let me write something. So here, view. So view means HTML, you can say. So it will display username and password, correct? View. Yeah. So on click of the submit button, so what it, it will go to the controller, correct? Yeah. So what controller will do? It will read the username and password, correct? Yeah. And after that, what it will do? It will go to the database, correct? Yeah. So it will validate it and it will get the response back. Then it will say to the user, you are invalid or valid. Correct? Right. So this is a view and this is a controller and this is the database. Right. Correct. <clears throat> this, this is yeah. one example. Say for instance, the second example, we have a view controller. So as part of the view, right, what I will do, I will give one employee ID or one city name. City name is input my in the view. Okay. So I will enter the city name and I will click search button. So it will, it will come to the controller. From the controller, it will go to the database and it will get the all the employees belongs to that city. Okay. I will get a list, correct, right? I will get a yeah. list of the employees from the database. Right. Correct. Yeah. So <clears throat> from the, so anyway, you got the list from the database and inside, inside the controller, you are I mean finally you got a list of the records and how you are going to display to the user, the list of the records, what page you are going to use it. Okay. So that one we used to called as a model. So we are preparing the model from the okay. controller. So basically we are creating the customer list object inside that we are preparing the customer object. We are adding a list. Right. So that one we used to call as a model. Yeah. And give back that to the view. Yeah. Right. So what view, what it will do, it will take the 10 employee list and it will display it. Right. The 10 employee list, how we are preparing that one we used to call as a model. Who will oh. prepare the model? Controller. Controller. Correct. Now everything is separated, right? Yeah. So how we are going to display that will be as part of you. So how the model you are preparing? So that is a model. So who will prepare the model? Controller will prepare the model. So everything will be in different, different oh. layers. Right. So whatever model, whatever piece you want to modify, just go into that particular module or layer and modify it. Right. This is clear, right? All the modules are clearly separated. Instead of writing yes. everything in one JSP page, now we are separating all the things into different, different layers. Right. So this 
uh, <coughs> model we used to call it as a MVC model. Oh, okay. So first model we saw in last two classes, IOC inversion of okay. solar, just to create an object, we are using this model. Correct? Right. And the second yeah. model is MVC. So what is the purpose of this model? So we are segregating the things into different layer. Right. So this is theoretically you got some idea, right? Yes. Okay, now I will show you one simple example. So basically here, right? <clears throat> so we are creating some, we are displaying something to the user, right? So we need some server, correct? Right. So basically here also we are going to use HTML and JSP. As part of view, we are going to use HTML, JSP as part of the controller. So we are going to use servlets. Right. And as part of uh, view, we are going to use, sorry, as part of the model, we are going to use the some POJO classes. Okay. Like a customer list. Correct? Yep. So this is the model view controller. So we, I'll, now I'll give one example for all these uh, layers. One example, simple example. Okay. Okay, first come to the, so <clears throat> before starting this one, right? As part of, um, so here we need to create a dynamic web project. So how to create dynamic web project? I think we saw it. Right? So right click new. So we need to select, go to other type, dynamic web project. Okay, just create the project. After that, what do you have to do? So this is the dynamic web project. So we have SRC and web content. Yeah. We saw this one as part of the servlets, correct? As part of the servlets, so we're creating, we are creating a dynamic web project and inside the SRC we have and web content you have. Inside the web content, you have web by enough. Inside the web by enough, we have a web.xml, correct? Right. So far we know only SRC, web content, web by enough inside the web by enough we have web.xml and inside the web content we are displaying all the we are loading all your jsps and html's and javascript correct okay. <clears throat> yes so so far right so i created a dynamic web project and inside the web content i i created one of the simple H jsp page index.jsp mm, okay index.jsp so when I'm deploying this, when so okay, I declared, I created index.jsp and if you go to my web.xml, so as part of the welcome list, as part of the welcome list, I am trying to call my index.jsp. So what is the purpose of this one? And now you are trying to deploy this application into the server. The, the first page will be displayed to the user is Correct? Index.js. Yes. So that is the main purpose of welcome list. We have discussed this one when we are discussing servlets and JSP, correct? Right. So, so far it is clear. Web.xml index.jsp. Yeah. Okay. Now coming to the index.jsp. So once I, if, if I open my index.jsp, I want to display this message greeting from Spring just a message and this is a hyperlink just i want to display one link let me deploy it and i will show you the message i want to deploy my web page into the server This is a hyperlink, right? Yes. So how you are going to display this one? So we need to use anchor tag. So this one we discussed when we were discussing the HTML anchor tag, and you can give the some message, whatever you want to display to the user. Get message from Spring. See, get message from Spring. This is a hyperlink. Yeah. Okay. So now the second question is, <coughs> on click of this one, 
what you want to display on um, click of this one what you want to display so we need to write one action correct yeah so what is the action name so that so this is the href this is my action so you can give anything here abc dot you can give xyz pqr so that is your action correct so in html and jsp we used to write a method equal to post action equal to login correct yeah we used to give right yeah we are declaring a form and action method all those things correct and we are uh, uh, giving a button input type equal to submit button and click of that one it will go to the action and it will pick the action name and it will go to the web.xml correct right so here also we have a similar way so this is your action and click of this one what it will it will go for to look into the web.xml correct right it will look for the url pattern correct yeah so here you see there star dot two so so what is our action name here hello dot do hello dot do so when i click of this hyperlink what it will do it will it will go to the web.xml and it will look for the corresponding url pattern name star right. abc dot do pqr dot do all the actions which is having extension as a do right so it will, we are delegating that request to this particular servlet correct yeah so here servlet we used to called here as a controller okay got it <clears throat> yeah so all the actions i mean whatever whatever name you are giving star dot do it we are delegating to controller yeah so what is the controller here if you see here this is the controller is a name and this is a controller value basically org dot spring framework model web dispatcher servlet correct so the action whatever you are firing <coughs> so that will be delegated to this servlet correct yeah so what is the uh, who written this servlet dispatcher servlet so what is the purpose of this servlet so that we will see now okay this is okay. a servlet written by spring people okay okay this servlet is written by spring people so all the actions whatever you are firing submit click link so that we are delegating to this this servlet so what what this servlet will do right so whenever you are uh, first time whenever you are restarting your server so this will be initialized see there load on startup equal to one so what is this tag meaning so whenever you are deploying your application into the server right so this object will be created all right so if you mention load on startup equal to one so when the first time when you are creating the ob first time when you are restarting the server that time itself this object will be created yeah okay so when this object is creating so what it will do if you see there there is an one another xml you will see here yeah controller ryphen servlet dot xml so when this object is creating so what it will it will what it will do it will read this xml okay and it will keep <clears throat> the memory forget about what is there inside the xml just it will read the xml and it will keep that content into the memory okay so far it is clear yeah so how the request will reach to the servlet and when this object will be created and how this xml who will read this xml who will read this xml dispatch a servlet in dispatch so when that will be happening so when you are restarting the server so just because of this tag load on startup equal to 1 so this object will be created this when this object is creating so that time we are reading this xml right we are keeping that content into the memory yeah okay And then what it yeah. will do okay on click of uh, that hyperlink so the request will come to the servlet correct yeah okay now inside this servlet i mean this xml information already there correct yeah okay let me open this xml and we will see what is there so what is your action name 
Actually, it was hello dot do. Correct. So inside this XML, right? So we are going to declare. This is the syntax. Just first see the hello dot do. So this is your action name, correct? Yeah. And the corresponding controller we had given, we have defined a controller here. Spring hello request controller. So this is the name. So what is the corresponding controller? So this is the controller. So this is the bean ID and the corresponding class is this one. Yeah. So whenever you are doing click of that hyperlink, so it will reach this action and it will call it this particular controller. So how that how that is happening through action name, correct? Yeah. Now open this controller and what is there inside this one? Okay. <clears throat> now let me. I basically I have deleted all the libraries because let me copy it. So here, right, <clears throat> when we we're discussing the first model, we added all the dependencies we downloaded and we added as part of the class path, right? Right. So here the dependencies we have to copy into the lib folder. Okay. So instead of adding into the class path, so in this, in case of web, web project, we need to copy into the lib folder, the dependencies, the downloaded libraries. Then copy and paste just just the copy and paste here inside the your lib folder. That's all. So oh. that is what I did now. Now come back to the controller. Okay. So from the action, finally you will reach your controller, correct? Yeah. So this is your controller and it is implemented by some controller. So controller is an interface. See here. So it was developed by Spring people like in your HTML, right? So you are, you are developing login.html and it is implementing the HTTP servlet, correct? Right. In the similar way here we are using the controller. Controller is a super interface and it is indirectly implementing the. If you see here, this is an interface, correct? Yeah. It's an abstract interface and inside that you have all the methods HTTP request and HTTP response. All right. Correct. Yeah. So you the same method you are trying to override here handle request. We are going to override here in case of servlet, We have a do get method do post method. Correct. Yeah. So here you have a method called handle request. So as part of that handle request, you will get HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response. Okay. So that is the basic difference between servlet and controller. Okay. So inside the servlet, you have a do get and do post. Here you have a handle request. Right. So finally, on click of that hyperlink, it will reach the handle request method. Correct. Yeah. So inside this. Uh, handle request method what you are trying to do you are returning some value yeah correct i am returning something written after that you, you see here new model view something correct so we will see this right. one. <clears throat> so on click of some link right so we need to the we need, finally we reach the controller and controller should respond back to the user right so this is the view you are going to see correct right so what is the view which page you want to display to the user as part of that click link that page name you have to mention here i want to okay. the response.jsp correct so this is a page name yeah. so inside this page name if you want to send some value like in servlet we have a request.set attribute and session.set attribute and we are saving some value into the session and request correct right we are using some key right Yes. Set 
session set attribute we are using some key comma value so this is a page i want to display to the user and this is the key hello and this is the value right and this key you can able to access inside your jsp page yep. if you use this key you will get this value so let me open this response.jsp and i will show you how they are going to access it so this is the key c colon out i will tell you later so this is a key name right hello correct yeah and if yeah. you use that key name hello you will display you will get the value as a hi how are you correct yeah and uh, finally to send everything to create this view right so we have to use this one we have to create an object a new model view right. and it will take three arguments first is the page name key value right page name key a value so right now here value right i am sending a string correct yeah so if i want to send a 10 employee list so you can create list customer list and you can send the object here right correct yeah so as part of the simple i mean this is the first example right so i don't want to create a complex example so that's what i created a very very simple one and i'm sending the value and this is my key and this is my page i want to display to the user yeah and this is a page come to this page and now i want to access the key correct yeah so i want to access the key and i want to display it correct right and this is my jsp so here right so we are using here jstl syntax so what is this jstl means to read the value and to display the value so we are going to use jstl core libraries so this one maybe i'll see so to use that one you have to use this pattern and also we need to download that libraries spring will provide you that kind of libraries okay that mm -hmm. this one we will see later but we have to we have to use this uri and we have to give some name some prefix you can give any name see not only here oh. you, see, you can give any name c colon out so if you want to display something you have to use the out and value is the key name so what is the key is there in your controller hello correct yeah so use that key and it will be displayed okay now let me restart it now let me hit it so now what i will do i will redeploy it also i need to copy another jar called common jar let me copy that one also common logging bin yes basically i need to copy two jars one second yes now i copied the another jar also now let me redeploy it and we will see So now the link we are displaying. If I click that link, so what is the action name? Hello. If you want to see the action name, right, you will see here. So let me place the cluster. You will see here, right? HTTP colon localhost colon port number mvc slash hello dot two. You can able to see the action name in the below. Right. Yeah. Just click that link. Hey, shit. What happened?
let me redeploy it and we will execute again back. Yeah. Mm. Okay, this one there is some jars are missing. So I will <clears throat> what I will do, I will redeploy these jars and I will show you the I will run this example as part of next uh, class. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. What I, will, I deleted these jars so I will, when I'm sending this file, right? This project to some other people to files, right? So that time I used to delete all the libraries. Then I used to copy make it zip. So that time I got deleted. So what I will do, I will take the new jars and again I will replace it and I will run it. Okay. 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 Fine. I will show you. I will run it say as part of next class and I will show you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Thanks.